Hi, my name is Dr. Zev Weinberg from UCLA, and I'm here to present uh, the results of a study presented at, GI, at GIASMO one Virtual 2020, which is first-line liposomal renal TCAN plus Folfox in patients with pancreatic adenocarcinoma. And here are our disclosures. So we all know that uh, pancreatic cancer has a disease where there's very few treatment options. And there are two standard frontline therapies, which include fulfirinox and gemnab paclitaxel. Non-liposomal rna again, also commercially known as onivide, is um, a drug that's approved in combination with 5-FU for second-line patients after having progressed on gemcitabine-based regimen gemcitabine-based regimens. And keeping in mind that there are subtle differences, of course, between liposomal and non-liposomal or can as these are not the same two drugs at all. The premise here is to combine liposomal or can with standard of care full FOX in frontline chemotherapy naive patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer. So the primary study objectives, this was a phase one, two study that looked at both dose limiting toxicities and establishing them the recommended phase two dose of the Nalirafox regimen, and also looking at efficacy endpoints such as response rate, PFS, and OS with some exploratory biomarkers. So this was the study schema, and um, the toxicity has been presented before, but it started out as a dose escalation study in which patients were enrolled on one of four cohorts. The doses of the 5-FU and leucovorin did not fluctuate. Those were fixed at 2,400 milligrams per meter squared and leucovorin at 400 milligrams per meter squared, and there was no 5-FU bolus. The two variables that fluctuated were the dose of liposomal arudotecan, which um, started at 50 and, and ultimately went to a high of 70, and oxyplatin, which started at, at uh, 60 and went to a full dose of 85. Ultimately, the dose that was selected for expansion and for a total 32 patient cohort was 5060, which is liposomal RNA TCAN 50 milligrams per meter squared and oxyplatin 60 milligrams per meter squared. So the standard inclusion exclusion criteria listed here, which demonstrate pretty classical inclusion exclusion for patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer, they needed to be untreated, they needed to have adequate hematologic and liver function. And the exclusion criteria were standard as well. It's a busy slide showing the demographics, characteristics, and disposition of the patient population. You could see the four cohorts, and then on the far right, the full, uh, including the dose expansion of 25 patients, and also the full patient um, group, which was 32 patients in total. Uh, some nuances here the stage of diagnosis of these patients was. Uh, almost exclusively uh, stage four de novo disease with uh, ultimately 88% of patients had stage four disease of diagnosis with three having had uh, a stage three or local advanced disease and, and one patient having been resectable and then recurred. The ECOG performance status was almost equally split between uh, zero and one. And here, this is a busy slide that goes over all of the safety overview, including the dose limiting toxicities. The primary dose limiting toxicity um, in, the, in this cohort that was ultimately selected was neutropenia. There were, as you can see on the far right, uh, 10 episodes of neutropenia on the study. Keep in mind that uh, GCSF was not mandated on the study, so um, there was no requirement to use it, and, and there was some people who used it and some people who didn't use it, so it was sort of arbitrary. Um, in terms of the other toxicity profiles, the other cohorts that were, uh, that were demonstrated didn't have uh, necessarily more DLTs, although um, they certainly had a little more treatment-related adverse events. And as a consequence, we ultimately selected the 50-60 dose to move forward. Um, in the total patient population, there was Less diarrhea, I would say, only 9% of grade three diarrhea or above, which is certainly less than we're used to seeing with Fulfirinox-based regimens, and a lot less peripheral neuropathy because 
keeping in mind that the dose of oxide platin here used on this protocol was 60, 60 milligrams per meter squared every two weeks. So it was less cumulative um, neuropathy uh, due to oxide platin. So these, uh, this slide shows the Kaplan-Meier PFS and OS estimates in the total 32 patient population. You can see on the left is a median PFS of 9.2 months, um, and on the right, the overall survival. Um, PF, uh, overall survival Kaplan-Meier estimates of 12.6 months. On the far right, you could see uh, the response rates that we're seeing. Here we had a response rate of 35%, um, which was consistent with uh, what's been published, of course, in the 30-40% range with Fulfirinox as well. There was one CR and 10 PRs. Uh, the duration of response was 9.4 months among those who responded and there was a disease control rate of 72% at uh, four months. So we did attempt, we did our best here to collect all tissue and do biomarker um, selection. We had, as, as many of us know in this field, a lot of trouble getting adequate DNA and, and adequate analysis on these patients. But um, 12 patients had um, adequate DNA. Um, and in this study, uh, we just we had to pick what we wanted to look at, but we decided just to look at some basic genomics, and we looked at beyond uh, the KRAS and P53 stuff that we all know these patients have. Um, we just divided them in Moffitt subtype into classical or basal, which has been published and suggested a worse prognosis for the basal-like subtype. Um, here you could see that uh, the large majority were classical subtype, 11 out of 12 patients who we could ana analyze. And there was no real difference in the PFS of, of these subgroups. And I think um, moving forward in the larger data set, we are going to try to look at this as well. So in conclusion, um, the findings of this phase one, two study suggest uh, that the Nalirifox regimen is tolerable and has an established and safe dose now. Um, no new safety signals were identified and, and anti-tumor activity uh, was seen. Um, which, in my opinion, is sufficiently encouraging to move forward. And, and what um, we are moving forward right now, and this is a, a large phase three randomized cl clinical trial, which has just launched, called the Napoli 3 study. And this study is randomizing patients to either Nalirifox, the doses used in this protocol, uh, or standard gem nampaclitaxel. And this is a one to one randomization with a global study of about 750 patients which has just launched and um, the primary endpoint of the study is overall survival. And uh, thank you very much for your attention today.